This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Won't you be my neighbor? From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. We recently visited Pittsburgh and the Heinz History Center. Yes, we went specifically <laughs> to see... Yes, the original sets and props from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. They have a lot of other nice exhibits, but that was yes. why we were there. Mm-hmm. I loved the show as a child. So did I. It went national on PBS when I was four years old. So I was in really the first generation of the audience. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it, it came the year I was in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Fred Rogers actually worked for NBC Radio behind the scenes in his early years. So he worked for commercial tele- uh, for commercial radio at the time. Mm-hmm. The Voice of Firestone, The Hit Parade, and The Kate Smith Hour. Hmm. He was lured back to Pittsburgh, which was his hometown. He was actually born in Latrobe, about 40 miles away, Mm -hmm. by new station WQED, one of the first educational stations. He was the puppeteer, composer, and organist of The Children's Hour in 1954. And that was a local Local program in Pittsburgh. Right. And most of the regular puppets from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood made their first appearance there. Daniel Striped Tiger... X the Owl, Mm -hmm. King Friday the 13th, Henrietta Pussycat, Lady Elaine Fairchild were all all created for that show. I think X the Owl, or maybe Henrietta Pussycat was my favorite. (laughs) I like King Friday. (laughs) Of course you did. Of course I did. And during the run, he... While he was doing the show, he also earned a degree in child development Mm -hmm. and became a Presbyterian minister. Yes. Because apparently... Uh, public television doesn't pay that well. <laughs> no, no. And in 1963, the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, asked him to come to Canada and create a show for them called Mr. Rogers. All one word. All one word, not two R's in the middle, Mr. Rogers. And this was his first appearance actually as a host. Mm-hmm. Before then, he was mostly behind the scenes or doing puppetry. So Rogers acquired the rights to the show in 1966 and then returned with his family back to Pittsburgh. So he created a show for a regional educational network, EEN, which was prior to PBS's existence, called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I didn't know that PBS ever didn't exist. Oh, yes. Oh, Oh, yeah. Okay. And so this was the puppet segments from the CBC show, along with additional material created in Pittsburgh. It was actually canceled in 1967 due to lack of funding. But Sears Roebuck stepped in to fund the show for the new National Educational Television, NET, the predecessor to PBS. Okay. All right. So the first national show was in February 1968 when I started watching the show. Mm Mm-hmm. PBS replaced NET and then inherited the show by 1970. It was produced between 1968 and 76, and then 1979 to 2001. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting here is, while they were cranking out like about 130 episodes in the first pass, mm-hmm. between 68 and 76, the second run, they only produced a handful of new episodes each year that they added in with the reruns. Because... The audience was two yeah, you, to five years old. Yeah, so you would, you know, outgrow them <laughs> right. and pretty then quickly. Pr- pretty quickly. And so they could rerun and rerun and rerun and rerun. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't believe that anyone watching our show doesn't know this. Yeah. <laughs> but just in case. The opening credits showed what looked like an HO scale town, like, uh, like an old train layout, uh-huh. with various buildings. And it panned to Rogers coming into his home taking off his coat for a cardigan, taking off his dress shoes for sneakers, all while saying hello and singing to the kids at home. And, you know, we saw that set that he came into at the museum, and it's so much smaller oh, yeah. than it looked like on TV. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that, all TV sets look and, like that. Yeah. But, if, you know, as a kid, it was like, I really thought he was at home. Exactly. You know? <laughs> now, one of the cardigans he used is actually now in the Smithsonian. Mm-hmm. We saw it at the Smithsonian. Yes. At the end of the show, he would reverse the whole process, Mm -hmm. again with a song. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So Rogers spoke directly to the camera. Mm-hmm. And then, really, to the kids watching the show. Yes. As you said, you really felt like he was talking directly to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I distinctly remember some things in his, in his home, in this set. Yes. The traffic light that changed colors. Yes. Mm-hmm. Picture, picture, the framed picture on the wall that said hi at the mm-hmm. beginning. The track for the neighborhood trolley, yes. which would take you to the neighborhood of make-believe, which mm-hmm. was the puppet, puppet segment of the mm-hmm. show. And Mr. McFeely with his speedy delivery. Mm-hmm. So segments also included trips to various local places in the Pittsburgh area, mm-hmm. like factories, stores, you know, uh, so you could learn about what more about the world. Yes. Rogers would sometimes talk about very serious topics and explain them to the kids. He did a segment that was actually, I, I don't know if it was actually on, on video or just, uh, I, I could only find a sound record of it, uh, after the 2001 attacks to try to explain to the kids what's going mm. on. And that was actually one of the last things he did in terms of that, of, of, of playing that character, if you can call it a character. Mm-hmm. Um and so he would use the puppet segments to emphasize his points. And he wanted to make sure the kids felt good about themselves, but he never talked down to them. Yes. And in the second run, he would have a whole week of shows on a single topic. Hmm. So I don't remember I don't the remember that run. either. I didn't watch well, yeah, much was, after I was <laughs> Right, yeah. This started like seventy nine. Yeah. And so you would have this one week of new shows and mm-hmm. then it would be, okay, and then the rest of it would all be reruns. Because mm-hmm. they were only doing literally like 10, 15, 20 episodes a season mm-hmm. they would throw in. Uh, Rogers wrote and produced the show throughout its run. He composed 200 songs for the show. Uh, the show incorporated jazz, which was unique for a kid's show mm-hmm. to have jazz. A couple things here, and you can find these on YouTube, and I highly recommend you do so. Rogers effectively saved public broadcasting in the United States after he appeared in front of a Senate hearing in 1969. And there is this, there is this senator that keep going back to at the beginning. He is just like, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, what, you, what is your deal, and all that. And by the end, you know, he, he, he basically says, you know, I think you just got your 20 million. <laughs> I mean, he just, he literally changes the senator's mind during this, during this, this few minutes. Oh, you wonder if that could even happen now. No. They wouldn't even be listening to him, you know? Right. Rogers was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame in 1999. Look this up online. Have a tissue ready. (laughs) Okay? You really do. Fred Rogers died in 2003, shortly after acting as Grand Marshal in the Tournament of Roses Parade. Like Mm. like a month later, he passed away. And in 2007... PBS stopped showing the reruns at the national level. So they didn't they stopped syndicating it to mm-hmm. all the stations. But a lot of stations just continue to play them. Yeah. Regardless. Mm-hmm. Cuz it, it there's absolutely still a market. Now you can say, well, it may be a little outdated especially the older shows. Apparently at one point in the 80s, they they uh, in the, by the late 80s they had enough of the second set mm-hmm. to have a real set and they dropped the earlier Other episodes, episodes which by that point were pretty dated because they went back to like 76. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rogers Company is still around, the Fred Rogers Company. It now produces three shows on PBS. Mm -hmm. Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, an animated show. Peg and Cat, which apparently is a math show, also Mm -hmm. animated. Mm -hmm. And Odd Squad, which is a live action show. Mm -hmm. All of these, of of course, won awards. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you can see a lot of this. There's a couple places other than just finding it on YouTube or somewhere like that. PBSKids.org slash Rogers and at FredRogers.org. This is, you know, everybody grows up with a show that right. is like the one they watched as a kid. A lot of my younger friends remember Sesame Street mm-hmm. with fondness or whatever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But this is definitely my show where I was... You know, in the, my formative years watching, and I loved him, and I learned a lot, I think. Right. And so I urge everyone to go out and look at these links and watch Mr. Rogers again. Yep. Or go to the museum. Right. And see the displays. Right. And meantime, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy.
And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.